It's a sport of speed, adrenaline, and danger. Glamour, wealth, and royalty. Polo may be the sport of kings, but today women are picking up mallets by the masses and taking the traditionally male-dominated sport by storm. Women make up right now almost 40% of membership of the United States Polo Association, so we're nearing 50-50. Women are the fastest growing segment of the USPA. That's the real future of the sport. The heart of women's polo is in Wellington, Florida. About 12 miles from Palm Beach County's stunning shoreline, Wellington attracts horse enthusiasts from around the globe. Home to the Winter Equestrian Festival and the Palm Beach International Polo Club, each season jumpers, dressage riders, and polo players descend upon this epicenter of equestrian sport. And today, more and more women are taking the reins. We're so excited about the show. Uh, it actually represents our official launch for our Inspiring Others campaign that our brand, US Polo ASSN, is doing around the world. Uh, to be able to showcase these wonderful women and tell the story and the impact they've had on polo is gonna be very special. And together with Palm Beach County, we can't wait for you to meet these amazing women. But women weren't always welcome in the game. Polo has come a long way. Since the birth of polo 2,600 years ago, there has been evidence that women did play in ancient times. Polo basically came to the United States in um, 1876. It was definitely a challenge for women to start playing in, in those early days because there were so many social taboos. Uh, women, for instance, weren't allowed to ride astride. That was uh, looked upon as being improper, so they uh, were riding side saddle, and it was just a hard time for women in general, and they weren't accepted. And you had women who had to fight for the right to vote, so you had to fight for the right to play polo, <laughs> you know. In the late 1950s, a young woman named Sue Sally Hale reportedly disguised herself as a man, donning a fake name and fake mustache in order to play polo. Then in 1972, Sue Sally made history, becoming the first female admitted into the United States Polo Association. But it was her daughter, Sunny Hale, who became a pioneer for female polo players around the world. She was a game changer. She was inspirational and she had a dream. Sonny wanted to create new friendships, good polo and shared passions. That was her mission for the girls, which she did. Born in California, sunset, Sunny Hale rode before she walked. Her love of polo ran deep. Becoming a professional player, Polo took Sunny around the world as it does, but it was in Wellington, Florida, where she changed the game forever. Just always thought there was something special about Sunny. She was like a sister and sometimes like a daughter to me, both. Sometimes she'd be at my house and she'd wake up in the morning and say, Joe, she'd come out of the room. You know how we're gonna change the world today? She says, we're gonna put women's polo on the map. She goes, it's time, and I said, and how are we supposed to do that? U.S. Polo Association's Open Championship Final. Can Sunny Hale be the first one with her name on the cup? Sunny became the top-ranked female player in the world. Then in 2000, the famed Adolfo Cambiasso invited Sunny to play on his U.S. Open Championship team. Congratulations to our pack. She was living her dream at that moment, and um, Adolfo himself will tell you, which he's told me, Sonny had a 10 goal brain. And I don't think you get a bigger compliment than that from the top player in the world. Sonny Hale, can she pull away from Johnson? Sonny Hale has had an enormous Sonny impact on not Sonny just women's polo, but polo around the world. She was uh, the first woman to win the U.S. Open, not just a women's tournament, but to win the United States Open, which is just a monumental accomplishment. She was absolutely the, the game changer for the way women were viewed in the sport. Off the field, Sunny created the women's handicap, 
launched the American Polo Horse Association and established the Women's Championship Tournament, still played in Wellington today. Melissa Gandy was such a supporter of her mission to grow women's polo. She helped make that WCT possible because you just don't get polo fields during the US Open to play your women's tournament on. It wasn't for Sonny to make money in this. She was on a mission to grow women's polo, unselfishly and to the detriment of her own health. Never wanting to cause concern, Sunny kept her battle with breast cancer largely to herself. To the shock of the polo world and beyond, Sunny died in 2017 at the tender age of 48. She died in my arms and she had to make the choice it was time to go. And she said, this is what love is, she goes, can we go now? And I said, sure, sunshine, we'll go on a road trip. We'll, we're going down the road together now. And um, that's how it ended for Sunny. I think the legacy that Sunny has left to the polo world is inspiration and hope for the future. She spent so much time encouraging and mentoring people and aspiring them to be the best that they could be. And I think she's left people feeling that they need to live up to that and they need to carry the torch and continue the good work that she started. Go out to the polo fields. Sonny's legacy is out on the polo fields right now. Those are some of the legacies that she left out there if you watch these girls play. Coming up, a couple with horsepower. Then later, an Ivy League polo player shattering stereotypes. When women in polo, the Palm Beaches returns. Palm Beaches is a proud partner of the U.S. Open Polo Championship. Visit the Palm Beaches TV at thepalmbeaches.tv for polo action. The couple that plays polo together stays together. Let's meet a dynamic duo living in the fast lane. Power couple Kurt and Ashley Bush are no strangers to horsepower. Both are so much about horsepower, and I think when we first met, that was one thing that kind of brought us together was his racing and my polo. I think that's, that's how our relationship connected so quickly, was the parallel backgrounds and how we arrived at the point that we were uh, with the racing, with polo, and the teamwork and the commitment that it takes. All right, ready to go? Thank you. For the Bushes, that commitment means an understanding of each other's craft. At their Wellington farm, the NASCAR superstar is learning to test drive Ashley's polo ponies. Come on, Kurt. You got this. I've played a little bit in the practice area. He's sticking balls. He definitely yeah. has the hand-eye coordination. Just need to work on your riding a little bit. The Hitting the ball with the mallet is addicting. It is so much fun to make yeah. contact and to see it go. And but. Honestly, no, I'm in first gear when it comes to the horse. Pass it to me, over here. I'm trying, I can't get another gear. Nice. I can barely drive a go-kart, so I cannot say <laughs> that I have gotten behind the wheel or that I am a good driver, so I feel your pain there. There's, yeah, there's the professional yeah. on the polo side, the professional on the racing side, but I would say that on a scale of one to 10, we're about a one in each other's <laughs> category. Yeah. 
sport is just the beginning. And I picked out each one of these Pantone colors. You'll see they're all listed here. Ashley's launching her own way. line of swimwear. She's also a philanthropist, competing in tournaments like the Duke of Sussex's Sent to Bali, benefiting children in Africa with HIV. And she's an ambassador for the fashion and lifestyle brand US Polo ASSN, a job that helps promote female players. Being a brand ambassador for the US Polo ASSN is just such an honor for me, especially as a female in the sport. It's important for me to create a face for women and show them that even if it's predominantly male, a male sport, that they should just go after it. And with USPA and all of the initiatives they're doing for women, as well as supporting the Women's Open this year coming up, I love being a part of the brand. I think polo is just one of those sports that is super unique and when you get out on the polo field, doesn't matter how old you are, if you're a female, a male, like what background you came from, everybody's equal on the polo field. You gotta get in there and get dirty. Polo is a rough he, sport. He I says think. I have like helmet-itis, like him. So when he puts his helmet on, it's competition time. And when I put my helmet on, I'm aggressive and I'm competing. So it's a different side of Ashley. And I love watching that because she changes. She's not this sweet all the time. <laughs> I try. Can we get it? <laughs> Each year, thousands of unwanted and discarded horses wind up in kill pens. But one Wellington woman is rescuing these horses and giving them a new purpose through polo. If you met my rescues when I first got them compared to now, their personalities are 100% different. These horses were terrified of people, absolutely terrified. And now you walk into their paddock and they will not leave you alone. <laughs> I had just graduated from law school. I had moved to Chicago and I was working. So I wanted something to keep me connected with horses. I wanted a project horse. And during my search, I came across this little, this adorable paint pony. She was kind of skinny, didn't really look great, but I could see a lot of potential in her. So I called the number on the ad and he explained to me that she was priced based on her weight. When I inquired as to why that's how she was priced, he explained to me that he was a kill buyer. As soon as he told me that, I said, I'll take her. Stella was just the beginning of Pamela Flanagan's journey rescuing, rehabilitating, and repurposing vulnerable horses. Every horse needs a purpose because it gives the horse a reason to be fed and taken care of and, and worked with and looked after. For horses like Stella, that purpose is polo. I took her and started trying to teach her how to be a polo pony. You have to learn the basics, neck reining, stopping, what a mallet is, what a ball looks like, traffic with other horses. There's all these things that a polo horse needs to know. We started slow practices. We started arena practices. From there, we started field practices. She's transformed into a real polo horse. My boyfriend, Rob, has been so wonderful. Him and his family uh, have this beautiful facility and they've allowed her and the other rescues to be here. And the horses went from a kill pen to Valiente. It's a fairy tale, it is. It's pretty phenomenal to see the transformation. After she had had a couple seasons of polo, after she'd been really fit, eating really good food, you know, she looked like a very top-level horse. I've oftentimes seen people try to cover up the fact that the horse came from an auction or from a kill pen or from an adoption agency because they think it kind of tarnishes the horse in a way. I want to take the opposite approach. I want to show people that these horses came from bad situations and now they're thriving. For Stella, thriving is an understatement. Pamela is riding her rescue in Wellington, Florida's 2019 U.S. Open Women's Polo Championship, the top tournament in the country for women. The fact that Pam is going to ride Stella in the U.S. Open now is, is incredible. It's gonna be impactful not only to the people who've been watching this from the outside, but it's gonna be impactful personally for her because she's been on this journey with this horse and you know that's what polo and, and horses are all about at the end of the day is the bond between the horse and the rider and the journey that they go on together.
Coming up, see Pamela compete in the U.S. Open and meet a silver screen couple with a passion for polo. But next, the incredible story of Shariah Harris after the break. Finding the right outfit can be a challenge. Still, there's one piece I can always rely on that lets me kick back when I need to, head out when I want to, and stand out every time. That gives me the confidence to be my best and be at my best. I'm Ashley Bush, and I'm a polo player. U.S. Polo ASSN. Live authentically. In 2017, a prominent Wellington Polo Patron was injured and needed a strong female player to take her spot on the team. The player she chose made history. In the third position tonight, we have Miss Drya Harris on Prince. There are perhaps few sporting events as elite seeming and sounding as an Ivy League polo game. Who will come out with the ball? It looks like Shariah Harris. Is but the MVP of this contest at Cornell University came about in a unique way, by way of an at-risk neighborhood in inner city Philadelphia. Where I was born and raised for a little while, it was not a good area. At risk for me more so meant uh, we were on the very low bracket of income base. Shariah Harris was eight when her mother took a wrong turn, stumbling upon a horse farm in Philadelphia's Fairmont Park. That wrong turn ultimately turning Shariah's life around. And we saw other black children riding horses, so my mom was like, okay, how can I get my children involved? Two times around, keep the booty up. Leslie Heiner started work to ride in 1994, teaching disadvantaged children from Philly to ride and play polo in exchange for barn chores, a commitment that keeps kids on the straight and narrow. Any horse person will probably tell you that if, you know, if they were surrounded by horses when they were a kid, kept them out of trouble. Well, I'm going through a lot, so it takes my mind off of things because I just have to uh, focus on the horse. Work to Ride, I learned accountability, responsibility, and just a hard work ethic because without any of those, I wouldn't have gotten as far as I have playing polo. When it came time for college, Shariah applied to one of the oldest and strongest polo schools in the country, Cornell University. I hid it from Les at first because I wanted to surprise her and she, she cried a bit when I showed her the acceptance letter. It was, it was a great feeling. We were pretty excited. There were a lot of expletives um, when we found out that, you know, she actually got into Cornell with a full ride, which is pretty cool. This is kind of my dream come true. Cornell was my dream school. I love it. My teammates are my best friends here and they are my family. The defensive change of direction plays? Quick one hit. I've started nicknaming her my queen um, because because it's definitely a case of both in the arena and, and on, in the barn. She's a force, that's for sure. Personally, I would rate her among the top five to 10 women's intercollegiate players in the country. Big hit by Shariah Harris. In 2017, Shariah made history when Palm Beach County resident and postage stamp team owner Annabelle Garrett invited Shariah to take her spot in a high goal tournament the top level of polo. We really didn't actually know it at the time that she would be the first African-American woman to participate in the high goal polo. I was so thrilled. I mean, I was really, really, really thrilled. And, you know, to have the Work to Ride support system there and have people then see what that organization full on does right there in front of their eyes was, was fantastic. Polo has changed my life because I wouldn't be well-traveled. I wouldn't know the people that I know. I wouldn't be able to say that I broke records, breaking barriers. And I'm, I've always been a competitive person, so being able to make it this far and something that I love is just very important for me. This remarkable young woman proving the sport of kings has a new queen. Next, movie star Tommy Lee Jones and his polo playing wife Dawn, plus a young polo phenom proving the future is female. 
and later the U.S. Open Women's Championship when Women in Polo, the Palm Beaches returns. Palm Beaches is a proud partner of the U.S. Open Polo Championship. Visit the Palm Beaches TV at thepalmbeaches.tv for polo action. Celebrities ranging from Sylvester Stallone to Walt Disney have taken up polo. Now one local couple is using their Hollywood influence to advance women in the sport. For Academy Award winner Tommy Lee Jones and his wife, photographer Don Jones, life on the red carpet tells only part of the story. The couple's other passion? Polo. I learned about polo through my husband when my husband and I met back in 94. He was already playing, he'd been playing for about 10 years. Did you have a good day? And he was so passionate about it and kept talking about the polo family, which I couldn't quite visualize at the time. Uh, I decided I want to learn to play. Fast forward two decades and Dawn has cultivated a polo family of her own. These days, she's the patron or owner of the San Saba team. A uh, patron is defined as the person who writes the checks. <laughs> when I first entered the game, it was mostly men. Uh, there were very few women that I would see that would play or participate. But when women were competing against it, each other in those days, again, it was thrown together last minute. People didn't have the best horses. They were loaned horses from their boyfriends or husbands or family or, you know, another friend who played polo, and they weren't really for a woman player. Dawn has made it her mission to improve the way women play the game. She mentors young players, promotes the sport worldwide, and with friend Pamela Flanagan, she co-founded the Women's International Polo Network, a so-called LinkedIn for female players. Everyone agreed, number one, it'd be great to have a player profile for all the women around the world to get to know each other. The other thing that was really important was to have a calendar. Everyone needed to understand who was doing what, when, instead of last minute throwing a team together. Dawn is a force <laughs> on and off the field. She's so passionate about women's polo that she, she really wants to take it far and she'll do, honestly, whatever it takes to get it there. She helps us take ourselves more seriously. She has an international reach, getting people excited play. Very close, evenly matched, you know? I have noticed yeah. that the biggest change is the skills that are being developed and the, the types of horses that women are riding now. Now we get a chance to play at Field One and IPC. We get featured at Grand Champions on Field One. You know, this is a big change for all of us and we're all very happy to have that uh, recognition and being acknowledged and taken seriously because we have a few women that are now becoming professionals. You're playing so well, oh, so fantastic. You. It's now possible for someone like Hope Adiano to have a chance to become a polo professional. For, for in women's polo and in mix, she can play both. That's gonna happen. Hope has the skills and the potential to be the best player in America. It's just a matter of time. It's not her strength, it's not uh, her power, but she's such a good rider. Don't let the pink ribbons and thin physique fool you. At 16 years old, Hope Ariano is a force on the polo field. Fierce. Fearless and, I mean, for uh, how small she is and everything, powerful. The fourth generation polo player is the youngest ever to win the Women's US Open. But for Hope, being a woman has nothing to do with it. 
She hates it when, when she gets a compliment <laughs> that says, oh, you're going to be a great woman's player. She wants to compete with the men. Hit and then immediately turn. Hope's father, Julio, is a decorated professional turned coach. Her mother, Megan, a former player and devoted polo mom. You could say Hope was born to ride. When my mom was pregnant with me, she played in a women's tournament and her OBGYN told her, you're not allowed to play anymore, but <laughs> she was in the final, so she did it anyway. And um, she ended up winning, so they always joked, oh, there was five girls on your team. I was about six or seven when I started playing, but I've been riding my whole life. The horses, though, have always been my favorite part about the sport. There's just such gentle giants, and they try every time they try their heart out for you on the field. When you're running, you're one with the horse, and you are just, you have, it's almost as if you block everything else out, and you're just really focused. Her whole heart, every piece of her heart is in polo. To keep up with her tournament and practice schedule, Hope homeschools and trains with her brothers at their grandfather's Wellington farm, a family effort to help this young talent go all the way. I feel like sky's the limit for Hope. I, I really do. I feel like if anybody can do it, she can do it. And uh, she just has a drive that is unstoppable. It's that drive that earned Hope a spot at the 2019 U.S. Open Women's Polo Championship in honor of Sunny Hale. Susan G. Komen Florida is excited to be a partner, the charity partner, for the U.S. Open Women's Polo Championship here in Wellington, Florida. U.S. Polo ASSN and all the partners here today are fantastic supporters for women's health and women's causes. The two teams comprised of female titans of the sport. Pamela Flanagan on one side, Hope Ariano on the other. Hope Ariano looking for that south goal. Peter Carvey gets a hold of that ball. Mia Tabiasso going to escort this one right on in. Hope, beautiful third shot. She's fighting hard there with you. In the end, Pamela's team won the day. Everyone played incredible, it was so much fun, and even though we lost, it was a great opportunity and I had a blast. 19 US Women's Open. This is incredible. Being here today playing in itself was such an overwhelming experience, but winning on top of that, it's really wonderful. Stella the Rescue Pony helping to win the Women's US Open and the hearts of so many. I wouldn't be here without Stella. That horse has meant so much to me. I wanted her to experience this just as much as I wanted to experience it. So we did the opening ceremony together. Maybe I'll throw her in in years to come. She's still young, I don't want to push her, but I wouldn't have been here without Stella. <laughs> From all of us, thanks for watching Women in Polo, The Palm Beaches. We hope these amazing women have entertained and inspired you. We'll see you at a polo game soon.